సాయిరామ్ శ్రీ సాయి సచరిత్ర చాప్టర్ థర్టీ సిక్స్ వండర్ఫుల్ స్టోరీస్ ఆఫ్ టూ గోవా జెంటల్మెన్ మిస్సెస్ ఔరంగాబాద్కర్ దిస్ చాప్టర్ రిలేట్స్ ది వండర్ఫుల్ స్టోరీస్ ఆఫ్ టూ జెంటల్మెన్ ఫ్రమ్ గోవా అండ్ మిస్సెస్ ఔరంగాబాద్కర్ ఆఫ్ షోలాపూర్ టూ జెంటల్మెన్ వన్స్ టూ జెంటల్మెన్ కేమ్ ఫ్రమ్ గోవా ఫర్ టేకింగ్ దర్శన్ ఆఫ్ సాయి బాబా అండ్ ప్రోస్ట్రేటెడ్ దెమ్ సెల్స్ బిఫోర్ హిమ్ Though both came together, Baba asked only one of them to give him 15 rupees as Dakshina, which was paid willingly. The other man voluntarily offered 35 rupees. This sum was rejected by Baba to the astonishment of all. Shama, who was present, asked Baba, What is this? Both came together, once Dakshina you accept, the other, though voluntarily paid, you refuse. why this distinction baba replied shama you know nothing i take nothing from anybody the masjid mai the presiding deity of the masjid calls for the debts the donor pays it and becomes free have i any home property or family to look after i require nothing i am ever free debt enmity and murder have to be atoned for there is not escape baba then continued in his characteristic way as follows as first he was poor and took a vow to his god that he would pay his first month's salary if he got an appointment he got one on 15 rupees per month then he steadily got promotions from 15 rupees he got 30 60 100 200 and ultimately 700 rupees per month but in his prosperity he forgot clean the vow he took the force of his karma has driven him here and i asked the amount of 15 rupees from him as dakshina another story while wandering by the seaside i came to a huge mansion and sat on its veranda the owner gave me a good reception and fed me sumptuously He showed me a neat and clean place near a cupboard for sleeping. I slept there. While I was sound asleep, the man removed a literate slab and broke the wall, entered in and scissored off all the money from my pocket. When I woke up, I found that 30,000 rupees were stolen. I was greatly distressed and sat weeping and moaning. The money was in currency notes and I thought that the Brahmin had stolen it. I lost all interest in food and drink and sat for a fortnight on the veranda bemoaning my loss after the fortnight was over a passing fakir saw me crying and made inquiries regarding the cause of my sorrow i told him everything he said if you act according to my bidding you will recover your money go to a fakir i shall give his whereabouts surrender yourself to him he will get back your money in the meanwhile give up your favorite food till you recover your money i followed the fakir's advice and got my money then i left the wada and went to the seashore there was a steamer but i could not get into it as it was crowded there a good natured peon interceded for me and i got in luckily that brought me to another shore where i caught a train and came to the masjid mai the story finished and baba asked shama to take the guests and arrange for their feeding then shama took them home and fed them at dinner shama said to the guests that baba's story was rather mysterious as he had never gone to the seaside never had any money 30000 rupees never traveled never lost any money and never recovered it and inquired whether they understood it and caught its significance the guests were deeply moved and were shedding tears in a choking voice they said that baba was omniscient infinite the one parabrahma without a second the story he gave out is exactly our story what he spoke has already taken place in our case how he knew this is a wonder of wonders we shall give all the details after the meals then after the meals while they were chewing betel leaves the guests began to tell their stories 
One of them said, A hill station on the ghats is my native place. I went to Goa to earn my living by securing a job. I took a vow to God Datta that if I got any service, I would offer him my first month's salary. By his grace, I got an appointment of Rs. 15 and then I got promotions as described by Baba. I did forget all about my vow. Baba has just reminded me of it in this way and recovered 15 rupees from me. It is not Dakshina as one may think it to be, but a repayment of an old debt and fulfillment of long forgotten vow. Moral Baba never, in fact, actually begged any money nor allowed his bhaktas to beg. He regarded money as a danger or bar to spiritual progress and did not allow his bhaktas to fall into its clutches. Bhagat Mahal Sapati is an instance on this point. He was very poor and could hardly make both ends meet. Baba never allowed him to make any money nor gave him anything from the Dakshina amount. Once a kind and liberal merchant named Hansaraj gave a large amount of money to Mahal Sapati in Baba's presence but Baba did not allow him to accept it. Then the second guest began his tale. My Brahmin cook was serving me faithfully for 35 years. Unfortunately, he fell into bad ways. His mind changed and he robbed me of my treasure. By removing a laterite slab from my wall, where my cupboard is fixed, he came in while where we were all sleep asleep and carried away all my accumulated wealth, 30,000 rupees in currency notes. I know not how Baba mentioned the exact amount. I sat crying day and night. My inquiries came to nothing. I spent a fortnight in great anxiety. As I sat on the veranda, sad and dejected, a passing fakir noted my condition and inquired of its cause and told him all about it. He told me that an Avelia by name Sai lives in Shirdi, Kopargaon Talu. Make vow to him and give up any food that you like best and say to him mentally that I have given up eating that food till I take your darshan. Then I took the vow and gave up eating rice and said Baba, I will eat it after recovering my property and after taking your darshan. Fifteen days passed after this. The Brahmin of his own accord came to me, returned my money and apologized saying, I went mad and acute, thus I now place my head on your feet, please forgive me. Thus everything ended well. The fakir that met me and helped me was not seen again. An intensive desire to see Sai Baba, whom the fakir pointed out to me, arose in my mind. I thought that the fakir who came all the way to my house was no other than Sai Baba. Would he? who saw me and helped me to get my lost money ever covered to get rupees 35. On the contrary, without expecting anything from us, he always tries his best to lead us on the path of spiritual progress. I was overjoyed when I recovered my stolen property and being infatuated, I forgot all about my vow. Then when I was at Kolaba, one night I saw Sai Baba in my dream. This reminded me of my promised visit to Shirdi. I went to Goa and from there wanted to start for Shirdi by taking a steamer to Bombay en route. But when I came to the harbour, I found that the steamer was crowded and there was no place. The captain did not allow me, but on the intercession of a peon who was a stranger to me, I was allowed to get into the steamer which brought me to Bombay. From there, I got in the train and came here. Surely I think that Baba is all-pervading and all-knowing. What are we and where is our home? How great of a good, good fortune that Baba got back our money and drew us here to himself. You Shirdi folk must be infinitely superior and more fortunate than we. For Baba he played, loved, talked and lived with you for so many years. I think that you store of good merits 
much be infinite for it attracted baba into shirdi sai is our datta he ordered the war he gave me a seat in the steamer and brought me here and thus have proof of his omniscience and omnipotence mrs aurangab baat kar A lady from Sholapur, wife of Sakharam Aurangabadkar, had no issue during the long period of 27 years. She had made a number of vows of God and goddesses for an issue, but was not successful. She then became almost hopeless. To make a last attempt in this matter, she came to Shirdi with her stepson Vishwanath and stayed there for two months, serving Baba. Whenever she went to the masjid she found it full and baba surrounded by devotees she wanted to see baba alone fall at his feet and open her heart and pray for an issue but she got no suitable opportunity ultimately she requested shama to intercede with baba for her when he was alone shama said to her that baba's darbar was open still he would try for her and that the lord might bless her He asked her to sit ready with a cocoa nut and joysticks on the open courtyard at the time of Baba's meals, and that when he beckoned to her, she she should come up. One day after dinner, Shama was rubbing Baba's wet hands with a towel when the latter pinched Shama's cheek. Shama, feigning anger, said, "Deva, is it proper for you to pinch me like this?" We don't want such a mischievous god who pinches us. Thus, are we your dependents? Is this the fruit of our intimacy? Baba replied, "O oh Shama, during the seventy-two generations that you were with me, I never pinched you till now, and now you resent my touching you." Shama, we want a god that will give us ever kisses and sweets to eat. We do not want any respect from you or heaven, balloon, etc. Let our faith unto your feet be ever wide awake, Baba. Yes, I have indeed come for that. I have been feeding and nursing you, and have got love and affection for you. Then Baba went up and took his seat. Shama beckoned to the lady. She came up, bowed the present, bowed and presented the cocoa nut and jaw sticks. Baba shook the cocoa nut, which was dry. The kernel within rolled and made a noise. Baba said, "Shama, this is rolling. See what it says." Shama, the women prays that a child might be similarly rolling and quickening in the womb. So give her the cocoa nut with your blessings. Baba, will the cocoa nut give her any issue? How people are foolish and fancy such things. Shama, I know the power of your word and blessing. Your word will give her a string of series of children. You were. wrangling and not giving real blessing the parley went on for a while baba repeatedly ordering to break the coconut and shama pleading for the gift of the unbroken fruit to the lady finally baba yielded and said she will have an issue when asked shama in 12 months was the reply the coconut was therefore broken into two parts one was eaten by the two and the other was given to the lady The shama turned up to the lady and said, "Dear madam, you are a witness to my words. If within twelve months you do not get any issue, I will break a cocoa nut against this deva head and drive him out of this masjid. If I fail in this, I will not call myself madhav. You will soon realize what I say." She delivered a son in one year's time, and the son was brought to Baba in his fifth month. Both husband and wife prostrated themselves before Baba, and the grateful father, Mr. Aurangabadkar, paid a sum of five hundred rupees, which was spent in constructing a shed for Baba's house, Shyamakarna. Bow to Shri Sai. Peace be to all.